Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to take a CSV file that we have stored in one of our Google storage buckets, like for example, this one here. Um, how can we take a CSV file such as this and how can we read it using BigQuery and write queries on it? So I'm going to now go over to another tab on my Google Cloud platform and head over to BigQuery. So that's under Big Data. So if you scroll down a little bit, um, I have a uh, BigQuery over here. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to go to my project and I'm going to um, create a new data set. So actually you can, if you this, if you enlarge this a little bit, you can see this here, you can create a new data set that is going to hold my CSV file as a table within BigQuery. I'm going to call this data set as, just going to call it taxi data set one, taxi underscore data set underscore one and just choose all the other defaults and just go ahead and create the data set. And now you should be seeing uh, this data set inside your project like this. So click on the data set and so click on this link and we will now go ahead and create a table. So the source for the table has to come from Google Cloud Storage and it has to come from a bucket folder file which we will browse. So go ahead and click browse and uh, this is going to be this bucket over here and within that it's a yellow trip data 2019-01 csv so go ahead and select that and make sure to change the file format to the appropriate file format in my case that's a csv file so i'm giving it the table name trip data underscore 2019 underscore one and i'm going to uh, auto detect schema and input parameters this is an important and very helpful step if you check this box, it means that Google uh, BigQuery will try and read the column names and the data types automatically and populate the table with those names for you. Go to advanced options and um, I would just allow a few errors, maybe 100 errors, just so that you know if a few of the records in my CSV file are corrupted or if I have some unknown values, it will know to ignore those things. and then that's it i'm going to go ahead and create my table this will take a uh, probably a couple of minutes you'll see uh, something like this show up here a job will be created for you and you can go to job history and you can scroll down a little bit i'm just going to make this go a little up by your top and this here is our job that's running to load this csv file from uh, google storage into our bigquery table you can hit refresh from time to time to check the status of the job. And now it has uh, completed loading because now the green arrow has shifted to a green check, bar, uh, check mark. And uh, let me just uh, clear up some of this clutter here. Okay, so going on to lowering this and just enlarging, enlarging this a little bit. So we can see it a little better. Um, so now I have my taxi. Well, so just go inside this and click on your trip data 2019 and you'll have a new tab for that. So you'll see the schema. If you click on schema, you'll see the schema of your new table. As you can see, all the column names um, and the data types have been automatically populated. You can also see some more details. For example, the table size, you can see the number of rows, and you can also see a preview, a few of the top rows. You can see the exact data that's there just to get an idea of what's in the table. So the next thing we'll do is we'll try and write uh, queries in this table. So just click on this button here that says query table and a new tab will open. So by default, it'll show you a pre-populated query. So I'm just going to hit a star over here. And what this does is it selects star. The star means all columns in your table from the table, which has a peculiar naming convention. It has the project name, fall, uh, Omega Mile, this one, followed by the data set, followed by the data table name itself, all separate by, the, by a dot and limit thousand. So, so I'm going to run this query here by clicking run and I should be able to see the results at the bottom. So here are the results and uh, you can see the results. Actually, you can enlarge this a little bit and you can see a little bit more. So I could do this and you can look at all the results here. 
So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to comment this query out and I'm going to um, insert another query. Um, I would like to view the number of records in this table. I would like to write a query to do that. So here's a query that does that. So it says select count star from this table and uh, ended by semicolon, which is just a good practice. And if I If I hit run on that, then I'm going to get a number 7667792 and I can just verify whether that is indeed the correct number by going to my table information, going to details 7667792. Yeah, so that many rows are there and that's what has been returned here. So that's this query here. The next thing I would like to do is I would like to view the number of records in this table where the passenger count is one. So for example, if you look at trip data and if you look at, uh, let's say the preview, you'll see that the passenger count is one of the fields and it indicates the number of passengers in each trip. In sometimes it is one, sometimes it is two, sometimes it could be even higher than that, four or five. So I want to obtain all uh, a count of how many, uh, a count of all the records that contain only one passenger. So I say select count star from the table where passenger count equals one. And from time to time, I'll just save the query. I can give it a name here to save it. My queries dash one and just click save. And it will be there in saved queries right here. And I can run this and see what happens. So I get uh, about 5.45 million rows of uh, data that contain only one passenger. The next thing I would like to find out is the average trip distance for all the trips in my table. So let me comment this out. Put it in the same line. And I have a new query here. So select the average of trip distance. So if you go back to the table, you'll see trip distance is one of the fields here. And if you do a preview, trip distance is a number. It's in miles, I'm guessing. And so you want to find the average trip distance. And here's the query for that. Select AVG standing for average. It's an aggregation function. And you specify the field name trip distance from the table name and hit run. And it gave you and it gives us um, the average trip distance right here. The next thing I would like to do is to find the average trip distance where the trip distance is greater than five and less than 10 miles. So I'm going to first comment this out and I'm going to paste a new query. So I want to find the average trip distance from the table where the trip distance is greater than five and less than 10. So let's run that. And that's 7.119. The next thing I would like to find is, I would like to find the average trip distance uh, for trips where there are only three passengers. So I'm just going to comment this out and run this new query here. So select average trip distance from table where passenger count equals three. That's 2.84. The next thing I would like to do is um, I would like to obtain the trip distance, passenger count, and fare amount for all trips where the passenger count is five. So where there are five passengers. So here's a query to do that. So here's a query to do that. So I want to select uh, trip distance, passenger count, and fare amount, those three columns from the table where the passenger count is five. I'm going to run this. I should give me a table here. Um, this table contains around uh, 323,842 uh, rows. So it's a pretty huge table, but it's much smaller than the original table, which has around 7.5 million rows. So here, all the passenger count values are five. So that's what we have here. Um, now I would like to modify this to actually save this new result as a new table. So what I want, want to do is I want to put another line before it that says create table and I'm going to give it the same information as we have here. Omega mile 9000, which is my project name. These things will differ. You'll have a different name, obviously. 
um, taxi data set one. Taxi data set one is the same uh, data set as the original table that we are querying right now. But I want to save this particular query into a new table called five passenger trips. And so I'm saying create table, the new table name as, and I'm giving the same old query as before. And I'm going to hit run. And that should result in the creation, that has resulted in the creation of a new table called five passenger trips. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to save this, uh, I'm just going to save this query here. And now I'm going to go on and open this five passenger trips table. As you can see, it only has three columns, trip distance, passenger count, and fare amount. And uh, a preview shows that all the passenger count values are five. Now, I would like to now go ahead and save this uh, new table that I've created into Google storage. So that kind of completes our trip. So we extracted a file from Google storage into BigQuery. We queried it, we transformed it, we took a subset of it, and we want to save this subset back into Google BigQuery for subsequent use. So for that, you have to click on export. Make sure to click on that active table that you would like to save, export. Um, export to GCS, it stands for Google Clouds Storage, and go on to the bucket where you want to store it. Let me pull this back here. Go on to the bucket where you want to store it, and I want to store it back in the same bucket from where I got the original data set, but you can pick any other bucket if you want. And I'm just going to uh, give it a new name. I'm just going to call it Five Passenger rides i'm just going to give it a new name and click select and export and here i called it five passenger trips and there i'm calling it five passenger rides so that's totally fine you can give it a different name if you want or you can give it the same name and now if you go back to your google uh, storage bucket um, and you hit refresh you should be able to see the new data set csv file saved over there so that completes this cycle. Uh, with this, you can pretty much, um, you know, take any data set that's in your CSV, uh, that's in CSV or, or maybe JSON or other formats as well, that's located in your Google storage. You can read that into a table in Google BigQuery and you can query it and you can transform it and you can create new tables out of it and save those new tables back into your Google storage. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh,